All right, so let's look at 79. Here we got that this figure shows the graph of f prime. We got to figure out which one of these to be the graph of f. And we're given that f is 0, 0. Okay, so then the key here is to um, recognize that when f prime is above the x-axis, it's positive, meaning that the function of f is increasing. And when it's below, it's decreasing. So it's going down. And then here, it's above again, so it's going up. We don't care that that the concat that you know that we have a max here. It doesn't mean the function is going to you know decrease. It just means the function um the, the rate of decrease is different. So first, we want to see a function that um has essentially relative a relative um relative max here and a relative min here. So we're kind of low. It goes up, then it goes down, and it goes up again. So let's see what we can first. Eliminate so it's definitely it's not gonna be this because see how it goes up, it's positive here, then at here it goes below. It has to stay, it has to stay increasing all the way to two. So this is already gonna be out because that doesn't include that. So we want to first look at the graphs that are increasing up until two. So this, see how it increases up to here, then decreases. So this is out as well. So again, it has only it has only increased up to two. These all right so far. Um, C checks out, and E we can eliminate because again it starts it decreases with four two, so we're down to C and D. Now, after from like two to three, it decreases, which is it's doing that there, it's increasing, decreasing. Here it's decreasing. Again, it doesn't matter it goes below the x-axis, it's decreasing, but we have to look specifically like at like the behavior of it. So like see um here the 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 rate of decrease is relatively low because this, this graph doesn't really get that far below the x-axis and it kind of even like starts to go back up. So it increases or it decreases first at a larger rate, then it starts to, to go it starts to like um get less steep so to speak here it has a great has a large rate of decrease the, the tangent line be very like you know very steep down so from this we can eliminate d and then we can say the answer is c to see how it's like you know it's decreasing still but it's kind of like not decreasing by that much 80 all right, we got a position of a particle that's traveling along the line given by the differentiable function s. And it's saying that s is increasing from zero to two and, and it's decreasing for t greater than two. So which of these will give the total distance for the particle, the total distance the particle travels from zero to five. Okay, so um, the key concept I, I, um, I I assume they're getting that is for you to understand the difference between displacement and distance. Displacement um just essentially is a is a value that'll tell you how far an object has traveled from its initial position. So it's possible that so for if you like go if you like go from home to school and you go back home. You may have traveled two miles to school and then two miles back, but your your displacement is zero because you didn't you end up being zero miles away from your starting position. But your distance traveled is four. So the thing about distance traveled when we're talking about you know physics is that we have to take into account the sign of velocity because when velocity is positive, because velocity has a sign and velocity has a, has a sign that indicates direction. So um positive and negatives can cancel out. So you can travel 15 miles east and then 15 miles west, and it's essentially gonna you know, add up to zero, but your distance traveled is 30. So you wanna basically integrate the absolute value of velocity to get the true distance. So we wanna look for the absolute values. The first two won't count because um, 
it's talking about total distance traveled. So we don't actually care about S of zero. We just we care about the integral from zero to five. And we want to make sure it's always positive. So it's not going to be those. It'll be, it's going to be E. Because we want the, okay, we want, we want the, but we want to integrate the, the velocity equation. And we know the derivative position is velocity. So the answer is E. Okay, so let's go 81. You got a cup of tea in a room that has a constant temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's cooling, it's cooling in the room. And the initial temperature of tea at zero minutes is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And the temperature of the tea changes at the rate of negative 6.89 e to the negative 0 0.053 t degrees Fahrenheit per minute. What is the temperature to the nearest degree of the t at the four minutes? Okay, so um, we essentially are just gonna integrate the rate of change of temperature from zero to four and add it to the initial temperature, which was 200. This will be equal to 200 plus the integral of R of t from zero to four. And for that, let's use our technology. Let's then Spire. You're a little rusty on it. You go to the home screen, calculate, and you can um, go to the menu and you can actually calculate a numerical integral. So we're going to use this function integrate from, from zero to four. I'm just typing the, the expression for R of T, so negative 6.89. This is a negative point zero. I three x dx. And let's make sure that the add up to 200. The decrease to 24, about 24 degrees from 200. With that plus 200. So it's going to end up at about 175 degrees Fahrenheit. After four minutes, our answer is there. All right, 82, the derivative of the function is given by f prime of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x or minus 4 times the sine of x squared plus 1 from the interval negative 2.5 to 2.5, which of the following values of x does f have a relative maximum? So remember, a relative maximum occurs when the function goes from increasing to decreasing. And when it's increasing, f prime is positive. f prime is greater than zero. And when it's decreasing, f prime is negative. It's less than zero. So we want to look for where the graph of f prime of x changes from positive to negative, from positive value to negative value. So let's graph this and analyze it. Let's look at our graphing screen. Let me go to the standard window. Let me graph this function x cubed minus four times the sine of x squared plus one. Oops. Outside parentheses. See what we got. Okay, so we want to look where it goes from positive to negative. So we want to basically figure out what that zero is over here. So let's analyze this graph. Let's zoom in actually. That's going to be about 0.54, looks like. So again, we're looking for where 
for when the derivatives changes from a positive value to a negative value. We don't care about this zero here or that one because it's going from negative to positive there and from negative to positive there. So we only care about this one. So our answer is simply E, 0.542 only.